Hello, this is Dr. Gardner. Today we're going to continue looking at gases. We're going to be seeing how we can apply the ideal gas law equation to performing calculations involving the stoichiometry of gas-based reactions. Now, what we can do if we want to relate to stoichiometry of chemical reactions with respect to what we've learned about gases, we want to be able to relate volumes of gases to the numbers of moles of gases that we might have. For example, if I'm given the volume of a gas, I might be able to solve then <clears throat> for the number of moles of that gas that's present in the chemical reaction. That would allow us to perform stoichiometry calculations involving uh, how much product might be formed. Uh, we could also do limiting reagent calculations with respect to that. And it would all be related to looking at the volume and pressure and temperature of that gas and relating that back to the number of moles of the gas so we could get into the stoichiometry and look at the ratios that we had. And then at the end of a chemical reaction, if we produce a gas, if you know the number of moles of gas produced and you know the temperature and pressure conditions for that gas, you should be able to also use the ideal gas law equation to solve for the volume of the gas. So really when we take the ideal gas law equation, PV equals NRT, we're going to usually for these types of problems uh, solve for the variable N, which is numbers of moles, or solve for the variable V, which will be the, the volume. So let's apply this to a few examples, but before we get started, let's look at the steps we might apply the ideal gas law equation to a stoichiometry problem with planning out how we would perform the calculation. So let's say we started with the volume of gas A in a chemical reaction. I could use the ideal gas law equation and solve for N here. Okay. And then I could solve for the moles of A. Then I can look at my balanced chemical reaction. So I'd want to write the balanced chemical reaction for the reaction that was being performed. Look at the molar ratio, relate the moles of A to the moles of compound B. Now that could be a product or another reactant. Uh, any other species in that balanced equation could be related to, to those mole ratios, just as we've talked about previously in the course. Once we solve for the moles of B, well then if I want to know the volume of B if it's a gas, well we could apply the ideal gas law equation again and we could solve for the variable for volume V here. Okay, so really I'm just applying <coughs> the ideal gas law equation potentially at the beginning and maybe at the ending of a stoichiometry problem. This is replacing some other things we might have done in the past. So in the past if we dealt with solids we usually would relate the mass of the reactant or the mass of the product to the stoichiometric ratio. So what we've done in the past was relate grams of A, use its molar mass to find the moles of A, use my stoichiometric molar ratio to convert to the moles of another compound in the reaction moles of B here. And then if I wanted the grams of B that were isolated we'd use molar mass again but now the molar mass of compound B and we would find the grams of B okay so what we've done here is we've replaced molar mass with the ideal gas law equation when we're dealing with volumes of gases so if I want to convert from volumes of gases to moles I use that ideal gas law equation and do a simple calculation to to solve for n uh, if I have moles at the end of the stoichiometric problem and then I'm asked to go to grams, I use the molar mass. If I'm asked to go to the volume of a gas, well then we use the ideal gas law equation again, but we solve for the volume of the gas. Now be very careful because the temperature and pressure conditions at the beginning of the reaction may have changed compared to looking at the end of the reaction. So you want to make sure that you're using whatever temperature or pressure the gas is at at that point in the reaction process so that you get the correct volumes or numbers of moles. Okay, so really that's what we're doing. So now now if we modify our pattern to relate to, to volume again, realize that uh, we could go ahead and piece together parts of both of these processes. Let's say I had a gas at the beginning, I had a volume of the gas, I had the temperature and the pressure given, I could solve for N for the number of moles of A, then I could use the stoichiometric ratio to solve for the moles of B, and if I wanted to know the grams of B, well I could still use the molar mass of B, so we could go ahead and use the ideal gas law equation just at the first part of the calculation, or if I had solids to begin with, let's say we could work with masses at the beginning and do a molar mass calculation, and if I produced a gas at the end, we could have done the ideal gas gas law calculation at just the end. So I could have it in either order and start to mix these techniques for doing stoichiometry calculations when gases might be involved. So let's actually practice this. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of reactions. Let's consider if we have a sample of hydrogen gas and my volume of hydrogen gas is 7.49 liters and the pressure is 22.0 atmospheres. So I'm thinking right away, I'm given a pressure and I'm given a volume. Okay, I could pretty readily solve for uh, the 
volume of the, or sorry, the moles of the gas, of the hydrogen gas, as long as they have the temperature. And I'm also given the temperature of 32.0 degrees Celsius. So I have everything I need, volume, pressure, temperature. I could use the ideal gas equation to solve for number of moles. So I'm thinking that in the back of my head. Now the next question I'm asked is I want to know the volume of water produced in the gas phase. So I'm getting water vapor here by the following reactions. So we basically have iron three oxide reacting with hydrogen gas. We end up with a redox reaction where we get elemental iron solid and we get water vapor. Okay. Now, the gas at the end of the reaction, we're told the conditions have changed slightly. We end up with 125.0 uh, degrees Celsius for the final temperature. So it looks like this is an exothermic process from that. And then we end up with having our pressure at 0 0.975 atmospheres. So I need to remember to use the initial volume atmosphere atmospheric pressure and my temperature to solve for the moles of the hydrogen gas to begin with and at the end of the process I will have found with a stoichiometry calculation the moles of the water vapor but then I'll use the temperature and the atmospheres and solve for volume so I can see that this is going to use the ideal gas law equation at the beginning and the end of the reaction. <clears throat> okay so let's go ahead and set this up let's write down all the variables that we know so I have the volume of the hydrogen gas at the beginning here uh, I don't know the volume of the water vapor that's what I'd like to solve for I know the pressure of the hydrogen gas at the beginning, so I'm going to put that as pressure initial or pressure 1 is equal to 22.0 atmospheres. The, the pressure of the water vapor is 0 0.975 atmospheres, so my pressure final or pressure 2. My temperature 1 for the hydrogen gas was 32 degrees Celsius. I convert that to Kelvin by adding 273.15 Kelvin. So the initial temperature of the hydrogen gas was 305.2 Kelvin. If I look at the temperature 2, that's going to be the temperature, just to be clear here, for the water vapor, right? Whereas my temperature one was for the hydrogen gas, okay? My water vapor temperature at the end, what we were told was 125.0 degrees Celsius. I convert that to Kelvin to 273.15 by adding 273.15 to get 398.2 Kelvin. Now I want Kelvins here because my ideal gas law constant has Kelvins for units, right? But it also has atmospheres and liters, so I'm okay with the units on the volume and the pressure. So here's my plan for setting up the calculation once I have all these variables. I'm going to start with the volume of the hydrogen gas that we were told here at the beginning, being 7.49 liters. I'm going to go ahead and use the ideal gas law equation, but I'm going to solve for N algebraically because I have the temperature of the gas given here as temperature 1. I know the ideal gas law equation. I have that memorized. The volume of the hydrogen gas at the beginning was 7.49 liters, and the pressure of the hydrogen gas at the beginning was the 22.0 atmospheres. That will allow me to solve for N, which is the moles of hydrogen gas under those conditions that we're seeing. And then I can use the molar ratio to go from moles of hydrogen gas to moles of water vapor. And if I look at that, uh, in this case, it's a simple 3 to 3 ratio, but I always want to write it down in case I don't have the same uh, coefficients, the same stoichiometric amounts of the reactant versus the product because sometimes you'll end up with a 1 to 2 ratio or a 2 to 3 ratio so I want to make sure I have that written down. Once I solve for the stoichiometric ratio of the water vapor though I can use the ideal gas law equation again but I'm going to solve for the volume of the water vapor so I'm solving for V and I'm told the uh, pressure of the water vapor at the end was 0 0.975 atmosphere, so I want to put the pressure 2 in here for the pressure in the ideal gas law equation for the second calculation. And my temperature 2 is for the water vapor, so I want to put that in for the temperature here uh, for my end ideal gas law equation. <clears throat> okay, so let's actually perform this calculation. So we're going to find the moles of the hydrogen gas by solving for N. So I rearranged for the moles of the hydrogen gas by by dividing both sides by the ideal gas law constant and the temperature. So I end up with the moles of hydrogen gas is equal to the pressure of the hydrogen gas, which was the 22.0 atmospheres, and the volume of the hydrogen gas, which was 7.49 liters. I divided by the ideal gas law equation constant, which I should have memorized, is 0 0.0822 or 0 0.08206 if we go out in an extra significant figure. And that's in liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. So I've matched my atmosphere so I can see my units of atmospheres cancels. My volume in liters cancel. Um, my temperature of the hydrogen gas, make sure you're using the temperature for the hydrogen gas and not the water vapor, was 305.2 Kelvin. So the Kelvins will cancel. Okay. I end up with units left over on moles since it's in the denominator in my units of the 
gas law equation constant, it ends up being in the numerator for my answer. So I get 6.58 moles of hydrogen gas at the beginning. Now what, that's my first step. So I've done my first step. I found the moles of the reactant, the hydrogen gas. The next step, we want to determine uh, the moles of water vapor, and then we would like to find the volume of the water vapor. Okay. So if I'm going to find the moles of water vapor from this process produced from the hydrogen gas, well, I had 6.58 moles of hydrogen gas that we determined from the ideal gas equation. For every three moles of hydrogen gas that reacts, we can see from the stoichiometry of the reaction, right? Three moles of hydrogen gas produces three moles of water vapor. This is why it's very important to make sure you have a balanced equation to begin with. So always make sure from your element inventory that the entire equation is balanced. Okay, once I have the moles of my water vapor here at 6.58 moles of water vapor as well. That's only because the coefficients were the same in the balanced equation. But once I have the moles of the water vapor, I can do another ideal gas law equation, and I can solve for my volume of the water vapor. But I must use my new pressure of the water vapor and my new temperature of the water vapor, which is different than the pressure and temperature of the hydrogen gas I began with. Okay. So I do one more ideal gas law equation calculation. We're going to go ahead and solve for volume. So my volume of the water vapor, all I did divi was divide both sides by pressure here, is equal to the moles of the water vapor that I calculated from the stoichiometry. So this is from my stoichiometry calculation. My ideal gas equation constant I should have memorized. My temperature was the temperature of the water vapor, so I'm using the 398.2 Kelvin right here. And my pressure was 0 0.975 atmospheres. I'm dividing by 0 0.975 atmospheres. I'm using it, the pressure for the water vapor, not the pressure for the hydrogen gas. So we calculate the volume of water vapor produced at the end of this process was 221 liters. Okay, so that's how we would apply the ideal gas law equations to stoichiometry problems when we're relating to volumes of gases and also relating to moles of those gases that can be determined from their volumes. Let's go ahead and perform one more example calculation with respect to gases and stoichiometry. Let's go ahead and, and ask this question. We want to know how many moles of sulfuric acid would form if we took 2.38 liters of sulfur trioxide gas. We're going to go ahead and and measure <clears throat> the gas temperature and pressure here. We're going to find that the gas's uh, temperature was 65.0 degrees Celsius for the sulfur trioxide, and the pressure was 1.05 atmospheres. Okay, we're going to assume that uh, here that we're reacting with water, so sulfur trioxide works with reacts with water to produce the sulfuric acid. So there's my stoichiometry for my problem. Uh, if we want to do this, once I find how many moles of sulfuric acid, we could also find how many grams by using its molar mass. Okay, so I have the balanced equation. First thing I want to do is write the equation, make sure it's balanced for the number of atoms involved. This one has a simple one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one stoichiometry, but they won't always be one-to-one-to-one, -to -one -to -one, so make sure you have a balanced equation right at the beginning. Now here's my, pro my uh, plan for tackling this problem. I'm going to take the volume of A, right? That A is my sulfur trioxide. Okay, I was given the volume of it was 2.38 liters. I'm going to go ahead and take the temperature and the pressure and solve for number of moles of the sulfur trioxide gas. Once I have the number of moles, I can use my molar ratio, which is merely a one to one ratio in this circumstance. Once I have the moles of sulfuric acid, well then I can use the molar mass of sulfuric acid to convert to grams. So now we have a problem where we're using molar mass for part of the calculation and the ideal gas law equation for the other part of the calculation. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up then. I'm going to write down all my variables. I have the volume of the sulfur trioxide gas is 2.38 liters. I would like to know the moles of sulfuric acid at the end, as well as then calculate the grams of sulfuric acid that we produce. The temperature of the sulfur trioxide gas was 65 degrees Celsius, but I know my ideal gas law equation constant has units of Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273.15 to my degrees in Celsius to convert it to Kelvin. So I have 338.2 Kelvin. My pressure of the sulfur trioxide gas was 1.05 atmospheres. Um, I, I'm also thinking at the end I'm going to solve for mass at some point for the sulfuric acid. So my very first step, though, is I need to get to moles. I need to get the center of my calculation universe for a stoichiometry problem, which is to get to moles of one of my compounds. So I'm going to get to moles of the sulfur trioxide gas by using the ideal gas law equation. So my ideal gas law equation, I'm going to solve for N because I have the volume, pressure, and temperature of the uh, initial gas, the sulfur trioxide, and I know the gas law constant.
So I solve for N so that the number of moles of sulfur trioxide is equal to the pressure times the volume over the gas law constant and over temperature. All I did was divide both sides by the gas law constant and divide both sides of the equation by temperature to isolate the moles the end value. So I ended up with the sulfur trioxide gas having a pressure of 1.05 atmospheres, a volume of 2.38 liters, and I divide by the ideal gas law equation constant 0 0.08206. I divided by my temperature in Kelvin, 338.2 Kelvin. I make sure all of my units cancel, so my liters cancel, all right? My atmospheres cancel, and my Kelvins cancel, and I should have units for my final answer of moles. Okay, so this is always good to write your units down. Don't don't get into bad habits where you're not writing them because if you're writing them down, you can see that atmospheres will cancel, liters will cancel, and kelvins will cancel. So I end up with 0 0.0900 moles of sulfur trioxide gas. Okay, now that has me to the point where I can do a stoichiometry problem. I know the moles of the reactant, the sulfur trioxide. I'd like to find the moles of the sulfuric acid. Because this is a one-to-one -one ratio here, this is a fairly straightforward calculation. So when I go ahead and take the moles of sulfur trioxide, I look at my balanced equation, I have a one-to-one -one stoichiometric relationship for so for every one mole of sulfur trioxide that reacts, I have one mole of sulfuric acid. Even though we're getting these same ratios in these two problems, I always write this down because sometimes it won't be one-to-one. -one. And when I start getting to problems where it isn't one-to-one, -one, if I've gotten a bad habits so of not writing the stoichiometric ratio down at this point in the calculation, I might accidentally forget to correct for uh, the stoichiometric ratio conversion when it isn't the same value. Uh, so here we end up then with the same number of moles of sulfuric acid because the, the stoichiometric ratio is the same value of 0 0.0900 moles of sulfuric acid. Now at that point, we want to find, uh, well I've answered the first part of the question which was moles of sulfuric acid, but we also want to find the, the grams of sulfuric acid. So my grams of sulfuric acid would be found by finding the molar mass. So I calculate the molar mass of sulfuric acid, which is going to be 98.09 grams per mole. So I take the moles of sulfuric acid that we had, I multiply by the molar mass of 98.09 grams of sulfuric acid for every one mole. We end up calculating 8.83 grams of sulfuric acid was produced during this chemical reaction. Okay, so now that you've seen a few examples of setting up stoichiometry problems uh, for gas-based reactions, I'd request that you go ahead and work on your homework problems related to uh, the stoichiometric gas problems. Okay, so start working on those. Your local instructor should be able to give you a hand if you need any additional uh, advice or help with those. So spend the rest of your time doing that today. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody.